How much would your life change if you knew every single time someone told you a lie? Even if that someone was you. Lies like you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you can't own a business, and you definitely will never make more than you did in your old corporate job. Get ready to be proactive, passionate, productive, and oh so profitable in a way you've never before experienced by opening your eyes to the big fat lies. Now, here's the host of Big Fat Lies, business coach, shaman and seer, Jennifer Kramer Lewis. Oh my goodness, you guys. Happy Friday. I am so happy to be here with you to talk about love. Love. Oh, love. Is it even real? Is it possible to know who loves you? Is it possible to know who loves you correctly? Is it possible to know how to love you correctly so that you can categorize people into most likely to love me correctly and most unlikely to love me correctly? And so that's something that I want to talk to you about today. But if this is the first time that you've seen my face, my name is Jennifer Kramer Lewis. I am a success sorceress, a shaman and a seer. And so I get my information from all different sources. Uh, I'm an autodidact. I'm a lifelong learner. I've studied under some of the world's most amazing masters. Uh, learning what I know how to do, what I know how to be. And one of the biggest things that I've always known how to do and be is to be a human lie detector. <laughs> so much so that, yeah, you know, I've been in circumstances where there really is not enough wine in the world to be able to deal with how many lies are in a room. And so maybe you are very sensitive like me, you have experienced this yourself, that, you know, being a human lie detector, being a, you know, just like so uncomfortable with the amount of untruths that are surrounding you, that it kind of erodes your own ability to know what's true for you, because there's such a stench in the room. And so that's what Big Fat Lies are all about. This show is all about opening your eyes to the big fat lies that are stopping you from being so happy, so wealthy, so healthy, and so loved in this lifetime. I really feel that if you can be happy, like super freaking happy, super freaking healthy, super freaking wealthy, and super freaking loved, that just basically like, is there anything else? Is there really anything else that people have difficulty with? I mean, for me, I would say that that's the top four that they ask questions about. And then maybe the five is about their spirit. How do I nourish my spirit? How do I take care of my spirit? And so this show is based on some of the modalities that I've studied over the years of being myself. Right now, I really love to talk about human design. I love to talk about gene keys. I love to talk about quantum physics. I love to talk about manifestation. I love to talk about choices that once you become more conscious of them, then you can start to make less of the choices that erode your life. And so we're not here to like solve all of your problems in 55 minutes or less on the Big Fat Lies show. But if I can help you have one little epiphany this week, then, you know, I just mission complete for me. I have people who watch the show every week. I have people who watch the show, have a quantum leap and then never watch the show again. Uh, my main gig is I am a coach and a facilitator. I call myself a success sorceress. So it's anything that brings you the level of success in your life that you're seeking. I have clients who make more in a month than they have in a previous year year period. And that's really normal. Like the financial success aspect of my clients is just, just normal because we start asking questions about the lies that are stopping them from being financially successful. And once they get over their obsession with being financially successful, then we can move on to the other places, the healthiest, the happiness and the love that they have been seeking. So for today's show, how do we know we're in the right place for the today's 
show. Have you been asking questions about love? And, you know, have you been asking for love to show up in your life? Have you been asking for the right love to show up in your life for you to actually feel nourished by the love that you're receiving from other people? Because in some cases, they're doing the very best that they can. They think they love you, but the type of love that they're capable of giving you isn't the type of love that your body would like to receive. So how does, how true does that feel for you? Like out of 10, have you been in a relationship with someone that you felt intellectually they loved you, but the type of love that they, well, maybe not out of 10. It's like a true or false. Have you been in love with somebody who wasn't capable of loving you the way that you would like to be loved? Does that feel true for you? So I want to see true in the chat, wherever you are on your comments, wherever you're watching this, because that's super important. Maybe they don't have the skill set to be able to love you. And, you know, for me, I'm an autodidact. I'm a lifelong learner. I am like so voracious in my search, in my hunger for the knowledge that I require to be the highest level me. And so for me to be with somebody who sort of sits around with their feet up waiting for life to come to them doesn't actually work for me. It doesn't turn me on. And so I get kind of like turned off by that sort of lack of hunger that, you know, a partner could have. And I've noticed that in previous relationships that, you know, they kind of wanted the status quo and the status quo never, ever works for me. And so that might be something, the very first thing that you might notice about yourself is like, how hungry are you for success? How hungry are you for a love mate relationship? And so that person needs to match your level of hunger. <laughs> and I mean, maybe it's kind of like sexy time hunger needs to match definitely, but also your level of, uh, what I want to say with this, your level of hunger for success, your level of hunger for being a better person, a better version of you next year than you are this year, that stuff has got to match you guys. Otherwise, it's just not going to work. Like you need to understand that. And um, so interesting. So I'm a pretty private person. And uh, quite recently, um, the person that I'm getting out of a relationship posted very publicly on Facebook that he is already in a relationship with someone else. And so that puts me out of integrity with you as my viewers. I need to come clean and let you know that I am in the process of getting out of a relationship uh, carefully, obviously, uh, we do not have a separation agreement signed. Uh, we still share a business and a house and somehow magically this person is in another relationship. And so I need to be clean and clear with you guys that I am going through something right now. And so does that affect who I am as a human being? Absolutely. And, you know, am I continuously supporting myself with my network? Absolutely, I am. And that's something that I recommend when you're going through something, you'd never go through it alone. You are never alone unless you actively choose to be alone. I am surrounded like on the Inspired Choices Network, there's amazing coaches, amazing facilitators. And then also in my everyday life, in my consultancy, I have access to every, just world's best gold standard. And so that's what I choose to hire for myself. I had a meeting with my psychologist today and, you know, super, super important that people get fully, fully supported getting into a relationship, fully supported getting out of a relationship, fully supported choosing to maybe get into a relationship. And, you know, so hopefully today I will be giving you some information that you can use to make choices on whether or not a relationship that you're in right now can be recalibrated so that you get the information that you need, you get the nourishment that you need, you get the nurturing that you need, you get the special attention that your body needs in this lifetime. Because like really, 
there is not just one soulmate. There are soulmate relationships that are available every day, all day for you. Like there's right now, without a word of a lie, there's probably 10,000 people who are single, who are physically and energetically and mentally, maybe spiritually, like all of the attractivenesses that you are looking for and uh, would be into you. So when we think about it from a, a place and space that there is always an abundance of soulmate partnerships for people to be in and, you know, whether they're somewhere else on the planet, that might be, uh, whether they're within an hour of your domicile, that might be, there may be some choices or some conditioning that you need to either make or let go of that would allow you to be in this soulmate relationship with any of these 10,000 people. But we are really going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about the conditioning of, you know, what relationships are supposed to be. We're going to talk about the unconsciousness of relationships. It's so funny. I'm reading a book right now that was recommended by, by my psychologist, and it's called The Eden Project. And it's uh, Jungian psychology. So um, Jung, uh, sort of basically the, the granddaddy of psychology and arch archetypal psychology. That's easy for me to say. And so like the level of unconsciousness that happens in relationships, the level of projection that happens in relationships, like where I'm like, you're going to be my happily ever after. And they're like, I need to be her happily ever after. And, you know, there's no choice in that when it becomes uh, what we used to call a no choice universe, uh, then you are at the effect of all of this conditioning. And oh my goodness, how many fairy tales did we read as children? How many books did we read? How many songs did we hear about like how to be in a love relationship? What is romance? What is love? What is sexy? What is attractive? Um, what people who love each other do and what people who love each other don't do. And, you know, like if it's all freaking unconscious other than the stuff that we can actively make conscious. It's a wonder we ever even get into love relationships at all. Like, thank God for chemistry, right? <laughs> if you're like, oh my God, when I'm with that person, I just can't stop drooling, you know, or just like the excitement of being with someone, you know, at the beginning of the love relationship. Well, I think it's actually possible to nourish that you know, when people are like, oh, the honeymoon phase. No, I think you can actually nourish. I sense it in my heart. I sense that you can nourish that honeymoon phase and, you know, start to create a protocol by knowing, like in the next couple of segments, I'm going to give you these frequencies that, that are super important for you to have as your human design profile. So right now, or like in this lifetime, I'm a two, four. And so if you don't know what your number is, then you have to go to like any web browser and type in free human design profile free human design profile. And then I'm looking for the number. So you're like a five, one, you're a two, four, you're a one, three, you're a four, six, you're a six, two, like whatever those numbers are, I need to know what they are. So you can type them in the chat wherever you are. And we're going to be talking about how to utilize those numbers uh, when we get to the break. And why? Well, why I want you to have that like the most healthy, wealthy, sexy, beautiful, gorgeous relationship. And so that happens with you. If you actually don't know the frequency that helps you feel the most loved in the world, then how can you even ask for it? It's like, I don't know. It's so funny. Like, I kind of want to bring this up for me. Like, I don't really like mashed potatoes that are made out of potatoes. Like, I just, I like the mashed potatoes from the bag. 
<laughs> you know, like the one that you have to like put the water in and then you can put butter and you could put some spices in there. Like I'm so ghetto about those mashed potatoes. So if somebody like, like made me like roasted smashed potatoes like I would eat them they would be really good but you know what I love the bagged Idahoan like for some reason I just love those mashed potatoes and that come in a bag like they're just like the cheap mashed potatoes in a bag so if I give that information to somebody and they just get me the mashed potatoes in the bag and they, and they just know that I love them. And then not too often, cause I'm, I'm low carb, but you know, like you just start to collect these things that people love. And so you're not going out of your way, creating these roasted smashed potatoes. And don't, you know, I like boiled the potatoes and then smash the potatoes and then bake the potatoes. And then I put all the spices, you know, like you go straight into your martyr. Well, if you're giving this clear information and they're collecting the clear information, then I really think you can extend this honeymoon phase for as long as you would like to. So we're heading into the break right now. My name is Jennifer Kramer Lewis. We are on the Inspired Choices Network and we are talking about how to get the love that is correct for you. Please join me after the break. Have you ever said to yourself, I knew I shouldn't do that. How did that feel? What did you make that mean about you? Business coach, shaman and seer, Jennifer Kramer Lewis stands for you being deliciously ambitious, passionately productive, oh so profitable, and creating a life that is truly delightful in every area. Tune in to Big Fat Lies every Friday at 1 p.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Mountain, 3 p.m. Central, and 4 p.m. Eastern on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com to open your eyes to the big fat lies that are keeping business owners from being the bright shining beacons they came here to be. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is Big Fat Lies with business coach, shaman and seer, Jennifer Kramer Lewis. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com or send a question or comment to Jennifer at jennifercramerlewis.com. Oh my goodness, you guys, welcome back. And so during the break, I really hope that you were Googling or whatever, uh, searching on the web for your human design profile type. So the number will be a one through six, and then there will be a slash. And then after that, the number will be a one through six, not exactly. There are 12 human design profiles. And so you will be one of those 12 human design profiles. And so the first number is your personality. You might actually even know that about yourself, like the frequency of that first number. Uh, it will tell you on there what you are. So just for example, I'm a two, four. So the two is the hermit. My personality is the hermit and then slash. And then the four is the opportunist. And so my body is the opportunist and it also goes with the chakras. If that's something that you have studied. So the first would be the root chakra. And so, you know, like also having a look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So like there's so many different ways that you can look at these profile types. But when we're looking at love and we're looking at creating these love relationships, I also want to call it to your attention that if you are really great at friendship, if you're really great at networking, if you're really great at creating, um, yeah, 
Like, do you guys get that information? And yet, for some reason, you're not so great at creating consistent love relationships, then there may be something that's available in your friend relationships that you have to graduate uh, these people who, you know, you're inviting into the most intimate parts of your life and to be blunt into the most intimate parts of your body need to have a higher standard of care for them than and with them and them for you than even a friendship. So if you have really amazing lifelong friendships, I would look at the frequency of those lifelong friendships and say, okay, well, what makes someone a gold standard friend for me? And then have a look at it from your love interest. Like, is this person even capable of providing me the same resources, the same frequency, the same love language, the same abundance, the same connection of soul that these, you know, beautiful lifelong friendships offer. So that might be a little take you to church moment, but I'm, that's one thing. I mean, with a show called Big Fat Lies, I just, I want you to have the unvarnished truth, the unvarnished truth about what it is that makes you feel loved. Because that's the thing. Like if there, if it was a four-legged chair, you know, love is one of those legs, you know, I mean, you can sit on a three-legged chair, but why would you bother? Like, why would you bother bringing someone into your life that can't offer you that nurturing, can't offer you the type of love that your body is looking for? So the first number is your personality. And yes, your personality needs to be loved. It loves to be loved. It loves to be admired, Um, whatever it is, you know, like you probably even know what your love language is. Uh, So Dr. Gary Chapman created that quiz, the five love languages. And so super important that you know what that is. And like, if there's 10,000 people out there, let's just hypothesize, but just like, let's own that for truth for, you know, whatever's left 45 minutes of this show that if there's 10,000 people out there that do meet your love language, like why would you even dally with somebody who doesn't meet your love language or can't honor and be like, okay, well, I know that Jennifer's love languages are words of affirmation and acts of service. And so she's going to come at me with words of affirmation and acts of service, but she's also going to require words of affirmation and acts of service of me. And so, you know, they might not be as conscious as you, but I recommend that they are. I kind of recommend that they are. And so, you know, some people are like, oh, well, you know, I study all of this stuff and there's never going to be anybody who studies as much as I do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what I say to that. (laughs) Why don't you just manifest them and then they can show up? Why don't you just allow the universe to fulfill the order? So I would like to go into these frequencies. So if you are a one personality, oh, I haven't gone into this part. So the first aspect is your personality. And then after the slash is your body. This is your unconscious. This is your body. And so if you're inviting people in to have a relationship with your body, you know, I mean, this is the physicality, this is the physical affection, this is people you're making out with, having sexy time with, having, you know, even sleeping with, I mean, it's so intimate, you know, sharing breath with somebody, you know, being in the same room under the same covers with somebody. And so if they can't fulfill on that promise that your body would like to have, then, you know, what is there? 9,999 extra people that could fulfill on those promises. And so if you're making it that one person, even if you're just like, oh my God, I love them. I love spending time with them. Well, of course, great. Be friends. Be friends if you can. However, also notice that there's 9,999 other people who would be a better fit 
And so we're not trying to like wear size seven shoes when we need size seven and a half shoes. Does that make sense, you guys? And I realize I am taking you to church a bit. So we're going to go to what these frequencies are. And I have them right here so I can see them. So for line one, so if you have a line one personality or a line one body, what you need is healthy rhythms and routines, healthy rhythms and routines, healthy rhythms and routines, healthy rhythms and routines. And so if you're like, I want to fly by the seat of my pants, I want to do everything spontaneously, I want to follow the rhythms uh, of my, um, of my flight and fancy. Well, one, there's somewhere in your personality or there's somewhere in your body that actually requires you to be healthy about it and to like really, really check with yourself. Hey, is this healthy for me? And, you know, even if you can't get like the information about like, like this is just a yes, no question. Is this healthy for me? Is this person healthy for me? It's just a yes, no question. Like we're not going into their resume. We're not going into their financial report. Like you can probably just get a yes, no. Is this person healthy for me? And it's going to be a yes or a no. And, you know, if you want to dig why, dig through why it's a no, then you can go ahead and do that. As a line one, you're going to want to be investigating. That's the investigator. Uh, however, you have your head brain, your heart brain, your gut brain, and also uh, your pussy brain, to be honest, or your gonad brain. And so if all four of those give you a yes on this person's healthy for me, then that's great. And then the next question, if you have a line one, is are our rhythms synced? You know, is it is this person capable of providing me with a rhythm that actually works for me? You know, these are the people where, you know, you text them and they don't text you back for two days uh, or, you know, or they text you and you're just like, oh God, stop. <laughs> I don't want 80 text messages. Like just, I'm taking time for myself. And um, that's probably, you know, we'll probably talk about that a little bit more in the number two, because I am a two, four, and I just can't imagine somebody sending me so many text messages. Like, you know, some is great, uh, especially if they're flirty. Um, but yeah, thinking about the rhythms, like, do you like to stay up late and the other person's up early? Uh, do you, are you like super social and the other person isn't like thinking about all of the different rhythms, you know, like rhythms for personality, like how often do you need to be talked to? How often do you need to be communicated with? And then also rhythms for your body. Like what time do you want to go to bed? What time do they want to go to bed? And then also the routines, the routines, like, can you build routines together? And, you know, do the routines feel onerous or do they feel like, oh, I love it when we do that, you know, like just for example, um, you know, I, it's no secret, I love dancing. And so, you know, getting to dance on a regular basis has been so, um, I don't know, it's just trans transformative for my body. I just let go of all my cares. I'm just like so freaking happy. And so if that's my routine that I like to go dancing, do they want to go dancing with me? Do they want to celebrate my dancing? Do they want to be like, yeah, check her out or whatever it is, you know, thinking about that for yourself, what are the routines that you would like to have with your body, with your personality, and are they even capable of giving that to you? Are they even capable of giving that to you? So line ones, it's healthy rhythm and routines, believe it or not, that will help you feel more loved, 
help you attract the correct love. And first you start it with you, and then you start to introduce your love interests to those routines. And then you watch for the red flags to pop up and you honor and notice all of the red flags popping up and make your decisions accordingly. So after the break, there are six more or five more. So I'm going to invite you to join me after the break. This show is called Big Fat Lies. My name is Jennifer Kramer Lewis. We are in the Inspired Choices Network. Join me after the break. Have you ever said to yourself, I knew I shouldn't do that? How did that feel? What did you make that mean about you? Business coach, shaman and seer, Jennifer Kramer Lewis stands for you being deliciously ambitious, passionately productive, oh so profitable, and creating a life that is truly delightful in every area. Tune in to Big Fat Lies every Friday at 1 p.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Mountain, 3 p.m. Central, and 4 p.m. Eastern on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com to open your eyes to the big fat lies that are keeping business owners from being the bright shining beacons they came here to be. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is Big Fat Lies with business coach, shaman and seer, Jennifer Kramer Lewis. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com or send a question or comment to jennifer at jennifercramerlewis.com. And we are back. So before the break, we were talking about line one personality and body and that you need healthy rhythm and routine. So now we're working on line two. So that's a line two personality or a line two body and what you need in order to be able to feel love correctly is healthy boundaries and freedom, healthy boundaries and freedom. So I would say for myself, I have been working on boundaries energetically um, probably a long freaking time. So for me, I just, I didn't have great boundaries. And so it wasn't something that I was able to create for myself, relationships that had correct boundaries for me, correct boundaries for my partners. And there was always something around the healthiness of boundaries. And so thinking about that for yourself, second line personality, they need to be left alone a lot. They're very hermity. I am a two, four, so I'm a second line personality and I need a lot of alone time. And so if I am with a partner who needs a lot of attention, that doesn't actually work for me. They need to be really like, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm available. I know when I'm not available. Do you happen to be available when I'm available? Like that kind of thing is like, yes, that's beautiful boundaries. I'm down for that. I want, you know, and then for myself, uh, I'm very careful these days uh, to make sure that, you know, just because somebody is available, even if a friendship or my children doesn't mean that I have to like drop everything and be available. That's creating good amount of boundaries for myself. So what I would love for you to have a look at is your personality needs healthy boundaries and freedom. And then also your body needs healthy boundaries and freedom. So thinking about like your repartee with a potential love partner um, or the love partner, love relationship that you're in right now, does that express healthy boundaries and freedom for you as a personality, as your like, uh, yeah, your personality. And, or if you are a line to body, is your body 
being gifted nourishing healthy boundaries and freedom from your love interest or potential love interest and is that person even capable of giving that to you you know i need a tremendous amount of freedom so if i'm with somebody who's jealous or like, ooh, she might be going off and, you know, hooking up with people or, or whatever the, the thing is, um, which I'm not. Uh, it's just like that person needs to understand that I need a tremendous amount of freedom. And so the, the thing is, line twos, is that you gift yourself the freedom first and then watch how people behave around you gifting yourself the freedom you know and i can think of different relationships that i've had over the years where like i used to facilitate uh globally like i would go to australia and facilitate i went to russia to facilitate i went to england to facilitate you know and then different places in canada and you know so if that's a problem for a love interest that you know i'm going to pack my bags and i might be gone for two weeks and you know i will be in contact but i'm certainly not going to be in constant contact then you know you just have to look at that like like me if me creating healthy boundaries and freedom for myself is um is hurtful or is uh bumping up against the boundaries of a potential love interest or or my partner then like i don't abdicate i don't recommend that you abdicate your need for healthy boundaries and freedom or healthy rhythm and routine you don't you never abdicate you never be like okay well you get healthy boundaries and freedom but i don't because i want to maintain a relationship with you does that make sense you guys you have to give yourself this stuff first and then you watch how people navigate your boundaries. Because if the people are navigating your boundaries and they start, you know, getting angsty or they start getting angry about you having correct boundaries for you, then those are the red flags. You can make choices accordingly. Remember, there's 9,999 other people that you can have a relationship right now quite a bit more than that, most likely, but at a minimum, this is the amount of people that you could have a relationship with right now. And so if you're making that person the one, then what can happen is you are at a deficit and I don't want you to be at a deficit. I absolutely do not want you to be at a deficit. I believe hundred percent in abundance. And so line three, so if you have a line three personality or a line three body, you are looking for pleasure and dynamism. You're looking for pleasure and dynamism. And so what is pleasure? Like what is pleasurable for you? What is pleasurable for your personality? What is pleasurable for your body? And is this person capable of a long-term or short-term, whatever it is, contract with you and your personality or you and your body to bring you pleasure? And what is pleasure for you? I mean, most of the time when I bring up the word pleasure, people are just thinking about sex, like all of the different kinds of sex. But there's so much pleasure that's available. Like you think about like food orgasms and art orgasms and like sound orgasms. And like, uh, you know, for me, I'm like architecture orgasms, like art orgasms, like all of the different like pleasure for the eyes pleasure for the ears pleasure for your skin pleasure for your nose like all of your five senses plus your sixth sense can receive pleasure and so if you're with somebody who can't have that food orgasm with you or they they just can't go there with you then you might not be with the right person and you can invite them to a food orgasm but if they completely like disregard your need for food orgasms or art orgasms then you know like they're they're not fulfilling a you know like a basic need for you you know 
Like just for example, say they always want to have sex with the lights out and you're like, no, I want to see your body. I want to see the look on your face. I want to like touch your skin. I want to like see the, the, you know, the bumps come up on your arm when I touch you, you know, like, it's just like if the type of pleasure that you would like to receive is not the type of pleasure that they're capable of giving you, then like red flag, <laughs> red flag, my friends, red flag. And then dynamism. Oh my gosh. It's just like dynamism is like, you know, that pendulum or that self-propelling, like it just gives you so much more energy, so much more excitement, so much more, um, oh, just like dynamism makes me think of like a dynamo, you know, like it's, it's spinning and it's spinning and it's spinning. And it's just like, there's so much energy and line three is like, you just need so much energy in your life anyways, to be able to do all of that trial and error, all of those adventures, you know, so if this person isn't bringing you that dynamic energy and nurturing and nourishing that dynamic energy that's inside you and recognizing it, like, wow, you're such a dynamo. Wow. How did you get the energy for that? How did you come up with that? You know, as a line three, it's hard enough to be a line three. I, I feel for you, line threes, all of the places in my chart where I am a line, I have a ton of line threes in my chart and, you know, it can be exhausting. And so the love that you need to receive from people, you just need it. You don't need to justify it. You just need it. it needs to have that dynamic energy that makes you feel like you're happier you're more on purpose you're more energized when you spend time with somebody so like the worst thing that a line three could have is an energetic vampire friend or an energetic vampire partner where you know you get home you've had a dance lesson and you feel all like frisky and you know they're like oh you never believe what happened to me you know, like by all means, suck all of the energy out of my life. So please don't let that happen to you, line threes. It's very, very important that you have a ton of energy in your life. And um, also important to recognize that if you are a line six, for the first 50 years of your life, you are operating as a three. So you have a double mission as a line six, you're going to have all of that trial er trial and error in the first 50 years of your life. So if you have relationships that bring you pleasure, that bring you dynamism, that's going to give you the energy to try all of your experiments here on Earth University. So how are we doing here? How are we doing here? Have you guys noticed some red flags yet? So uh, if you have, I wanna see red flag wherever you are and then I will find you. Uh, my team here at Inspired Choices Network always lets me know where the comments are and I will find you wherever you are on your platform of choice, whatever your podcast platform of choice or your viewing platform of choice is. Uh, if there's a comment box, go ahead and let me know if you have a red flag and what it is like, oh, I'm with so and so. And, you know, they're not capable of honoring my boundaries. They're not capable of being dynamic with me, like whatever it is. So let's move on to line four. So if you have a line four personality or a line four body, what you need the most is connectedness and trust with you and with others. And so the line four is the natural networker. And I have a line four body and I'll tell you what, like when I go out in public with my body, people just wanna meet me. And it's like, you know, I'm not just like wandering around in a bikini. Uh, people just wanna meet me. I have, you know, quite a dynamic energy with my body. And, you know, just, it's very easy for me to meet people, very easy for me to be, even as a hermit, I'm a friendly hermit. Uh, so that connectedness and trust so a line four will always need to feel connected to their partner. So it's like, am I connected with my partner? Am I connected with my love interest? Am I connected with this potential love interest? And is that a possibility for me? 
Can they give me the level of connectedness that my body requires, that my personality requires? Because this, this is your fourth chakra. This is your heart chakra that is connected here. So it's a very heart to heart with self and others. And so if they're not capable of making you feel like you belong, making you feel like they super freaking love you and that you can trust them, that you can trust yourself with them, then that will be a red flag. Um, I have more to talk about this line fours. I have more for you and we're heading into our break. You are listening to Big Fat Lies on the Inspired Choices Network. My name is Jennifer Kramer Lewis and we are talking about the correct way to be loved and who loves you correctly. So please join me after the break. Line fours, I have more for you. Have you ever said to yourself, I knew I shouldn't do that. How did that feel? What did you make that mean about you? Business coach, shaman and seer, Jennifer Kramer Lewis stands for you being deliciously ambitious, passionately productive, oh so profitable, and creating a life that is truly delightful in every area. Tune in to Big Fat Lies every Friday at 1 p.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Mountain, 3 p.m. Central, and 4 p.m. Eastern on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com to open your eyes to the big fat lies that are keeping business owners from being the bright shining beacons they came here to be. This is Big Fat Lies with business coach, shaman and seer, Jennifer Kramer Lewis. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com or send a question or comment to jennifer at jennifercramerlewis.com. Oh my goodness. Yes, please send me a question or a comment. Go ahead and send me an email. Let me know how all of this is landing. Let me know if you feel like you need some support with this area of your life. I do work with conscious business owners. Uh, quite often we come in on the money channel and then we start talking about pleasure. We start talking about connectedness and, you know, pleasure, as we talked about in the previous show is one of the main ingredients in making really a lot of money. And so if you don't have a lot of pleasure in your life right now, um, like I'd love to talk to you about it. So just message me, whatever platform that you happen to find this on, send me a message. I'd love to talk to you about that. So we're locked, talking about line four body or line four personality and looking for connectedness and trust. And what I really want to talk to you guys about is you may already know who you can trust. And so these are the gold standard friendships. And so a love interest, a love offer from someone needs to be, especially for you, line fours, you have to be able to freaking trust them. And so when they're showing you that they are trustworthy and continuing to green flag show you that they are trustworthy, then you can believe them. However, when they are red flag showing you that they are not trustworthy, you have to believe them. And I would say in my life, I've been more guilty of giving people second chances, third chances, fourth chances, 773 chances. And like, what's the point of that? You know, if there's 9,999 other people who are absolutely trustworthy, who could give me the, uh, you know, the level of connectedness that I'm looking for in my body, then why would I waste time with these red flag people? And this is me having a conversation with myself. So if this isn't resonating for you, or, you know, maybe I've planted a seed of consciousness that will go off whenever it goes off, that I'm fine with that. So line fives, this is what you are looking for. Respect and integrity. Respect and integrity. And so what this makes me think of is, like, I had a coach years ago tell me that 80% of the work that I do should be bringing me joy, like so much joy. 
and I should just freaking love 80% of the work. And I would say at that point in time, I was in a job that was just absolutely soul sucking. And, you know, I wasn't even conscious to the level of soul suck. How much does this job suck? It really sucked, you guys. It sucked. And, you know, I think I thought that I needed to be there to pay the bills. And so I'm wondering for you, line fives, like, I'm wondering if you think that you have to compromise and on the amount of respect and integrity that people bring you. And it's so freaking funny. Like I call my line fives, uh, the sugar mama or the sugar daddy, like people expect you to solve their problems so much. If you're a line five personality, if you're a line five body, people really, really want you to solve their life for them. I joke, I call you guys my own personal Jesus. There used to be a song, my own personal Jesus. <laughs> so notice that about yourself. And people only bring you what you are capable of solving. And so there's nothing really wrong with that. But a great question is, is, is this person respecting me? Yes or no? Am I respecting me? Yes or no? Does this person bring me integrity? Yes or no? And in this relationship, am I capable of maintaining my integrity? Because you are very, very powerful people, you line fives. You know, these people who are remarkably successful, in most cases, they have a line five personality or a line five body, and it would depend you know, a line five personality is create is capable of creating an empire, like an empire. And then a line five body would be somebody who's capable of having an empire by using their body. Like um, Miley Cyrus, the singer performer is a three five. So she's a heretic. No, she's a a uh, martyr heretic. She's got a heretic body. And you think about all the heretical things that she's done with her body. She's just so magnetic. Everybody's like, oh, Miley, what are you doing? What are you doing next? And so, I mean, she's quintessential in that regard. So for someone like her, you know, her body needs to be respected. Like even if she's going out and swinging from a wrecking ball, her body needs to be respected. And so she may not know that about herself. Her body needs to be brought integrity, you know, and the person who's touching her body, the person that's near her, the person that sleeps with her, or, you know, even her personal assistant, her, her closest intimates need to bring her respect and integrity. So know that for yourself, fives, respect and integrity have to be there for you. And if they're not there, then again, there's 9,999 other people available who can bring it to you. And so it's, there's never a deficit of people to love you. You know, that's one of the things that I really, really feel deeply that we are here to experience on this planet. Me, especially my incarnation cross is the right angle cross of the vessel of love. I am here to experience love. I'm here to facilitate love. I'm here to show people different ways of having love and also experience that for myself. So I've done a lot of the ways that love doesn't feel good. And I'm asking the universe right out. I will have all of the ways that love feels good and I'll have it now, please. And so line sixes, oh, line sixes, you are aliens. You need to know that you are aliens from the future. <laughs> you're from the future and so what you need is patience with your body patience with your time patience with your space you need to be able to feel clear and you need to experience the spiritual aspect of life and so you are aliens you need to know that about yourself and treat yourself like the special alien creatures that you are and so if you don't give yourself time and space, if you don't give yourself time to recenter yourself, like, and, and be curious about the spiritual aspects of life, love is going to pass you by, you know, like you got to get your hand 
your head up, your eyes up and look around, you know, because line sixes are here to show us a different vision of the future. And so super, super important that you get to express and feel the love that you are here to feel. All of us are here to feel an extraordinary amount of love. And so when we make it a finite thing, that's where we miss the mystery of it. And so I'm so excited that you came today. Please let me know what you learned from this show about how you can receive correct love in this lifetime. I'm so glad you showed up. Thank you for listening to Big Fat Lies with business coach, shaman and seer, Jennifer Kramer Lewis. Join us next week at 1 p.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Mountain, 3 p.m. Central and 4 p.m. Eastern on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Until next week, Jennifer invites you to laugh at limitation and live life delightfully by opening your eyes to the big fat lies.